This is the newest, latest, greatest glue bottle. You squeeze it here, and it comes out up there. If you get glue on wood and don't wipe it off, it's just like putting paint on it. It'll seal it up. You want to make sure there's no glue on the wood, because if there's glue on the wood and you put oil over it, you'll see it. It'll show up as a white spot where the oil didn't sink in and darken it. Also, a lot of people don't realize that the, the, uh, the different si uh, grit of sandpaper that you use on the wood determines what, how, how light or darker it'll absorb the stain. Okay, difference there. Mm -hmm. But you can see what's going to end up happening there. Plug, plugs get flush, cut here on flush, and this, uh, this gets flush, cut flush. Same thing up here. Mm -hmm. and then, we, then we sand it smooth so it looks like it was born there. Even though it wasn't. My name is Frank Sheridan. I am a woodworker. I spent most of my adult life building interiors for airplanes for head of state and executive business jets. My name is John Rise and I am a professor at the Savannah College of Art and Design. I teach drawing in the School of Foundation Studies, principally all drawing classes. Hello, I'm Karen Rise, the wife of John Rise. I do everything for John to make it possible for him to go into his workshop and into his studio. I started a business in 1979 manufacturing canvas stretcher bars and that business expanded to include easels in oh the mid 80s. The easel industry at that time was very complacent and pretty soft, very vulnerable and um, needed some changes. John comes from a very creative background, design background. He's a painter, he's a still life painter by heart, by trade, that's what he went to school for. I don't come from that background, I come from a law enforcement background, you know, uh, up against the wall, spread them and search them. That's my, that's how I operate. All the easels were in what they called KD form, knockdown form. Well, I took this easel, I went home and tried to put it together and had difficulty putting it together and the instructions were in three or four different languages and the product was just simply not a very good quality product and I determined at that time that I could not only make a better easel but if we could figure out how to ship them fully assembled we would remove the assembly aspect away from the customer. John is very methodical and I've had to learn to go into that world of his, from his painting, from his designing of easels, for his love of art, for his love of any type of creativity. It's brand new to me. John was working on something about a knob, and, uh, and he went to Granger's and he, and, and he was looking for a part. And Frank was there in line. Frank said, what are, you, what are you trying to do there? And John said, I'm trying to find some material to make this part. And Frank said, I can do that for you. Frank is a master craftsman. He, his contributions to these easel ideas have been, well, they've made it a much better product. His craftsmanship is exceptional. His ideas have been very good. Um, he's job wise, job smart. John had some designs that were really good and uh, we built off those. We've got a couple of models going now. They've been released and uh, we've got more coming down the pipe. We put a lot more time into everything we build. Uh, that attention to detail makes a difference. You can see it the first time you lay eyes on our product, you know it's different. We, are, we have some very specific job-oriented easels that we build. This is something that you could leave in your front room when the company comes over with your painting on it. You don't have to hide your tools. You know? For a lot of people, that means a lot. They don't like to carry things in and out of the room all the time. All well, these easels that you see around the room here, and there's quite a few of them that have gone shipped out by now, so the numbers are starting to get kind of scary to me. You know, when you look back and say, wow, I built 50 of these or whatever. You know? I've never done 50 of anything in my life. Uh, the wood that we buy, we buy from uh, specialty wood stores mostly. Uh, there's one here in town that stocks a lot of turning supplies and bowl blanks and stuff like that. We've got some nice wood in this country. We've got some maples and, you know, oaks and stuff that just blow your mind if you really look at them right and you cut them right. Uh, if you take a piece of wood, depending on which way the cut is made in the tree, the wood could be quarter sawn, half, you know, flat sawn, whatever, and that'll give it a different grain. The same piece of wood cut in different directions will look entirely different. My grandmother 
always told me, don't buy the cheapest thing you can get. She says, because you know you're going to get the cheapest thing there is. You, know, you don't have to buy the priciest thing, but don't buy the cheapest. Avoid the cheap stuff. If you come up with a creative solution, then you're going to have a much more successful product. Focus on John's passion, which is painting. Takes him a year, takes him a whole summer, takes him a year and a half to do things like that. Or these easels, where he's dedicating a part of his life to it. That, that's, that's my future. I don't ever see myself stopping doing something like this. If you stop doing things, you stop living. Like I said, this is, I wasn't born to do this, it, it found me. Something made this happen for me. And I just hope I can make it happen for the back, you know? No matter how we do it, I think that's what is, is really critical. And I think that if I, if I can do that, in any capacity or in any in all capacities, then then this has been a good successful turn. Are we done? <laughs>